Hello everyone, this is Reza from Radacad and today I'm going to show you a trick in DAX which is the comparison between SUM and SUMX. What is SUM function in DAX? What is SUMX function? What you can do with each? What is the main difference in which scenarios you should, it, you should use which function? Let's check it out. Let's start this uh, with looking at uh, sum first and then looking at what sum uh, can do, cannot do, and then talk about SUMX. Uh, this model that you see is a Power BI model I built on top of AdventureWorks uh, dataset. If you want to uh, uh, build this model, go and download it under the link um, down from my blog below about uh, the same topic. You can access it at Adventure, AdventureWorks dataset and download it. Now, um, I'm going to first show you what is uh, SUM and the difference of that with SUMX. So what I'll do is I'll go and create a new measure. And uh, just to be uh, ver uh, to be precise here, uh, measures and columns are like totally different subject. Uh, what scenario you use, which I have explained it in another blog article. Go and check it out. Um, so let's say I create a measure. I call it sum of sales, and I say this measure equals sum. Sum is a column that calculates the summarization of, uh, sum is a function that calculates the summarization of a column. For example, when I say sum of sales amount, what I would get is sum of the sales amount as the result. Um, so I can go and uh, build a table visual here with just that sum of sales as the measure. And this is the value, let me make it bigger. Uh, and this is the value showing the total sum of sales in my table. Now, if I start slicing and dicing by education, this would be sum of the sales for each education category, right? Uh, this is how measures works. They are dynamic based on the selection of items in your slicers and visuals. Now, this is sum of sales and it works perfectly fine. Um, there is no problem with that. Now, you might think that, okay, uh, so that's sum. Now, what sum x does? Uh, so, sum x is uh, quite similar the way that it produces uh, the output. However, it uses it used in different scenarios. Let's say, for example, instead of sum of sales, I want sum of uh, margin because we also have a column here, cost, total product cost. We also have this column and I want uh, a column beside this that is sales minus cost, right, as a margin. And I want to have it as a measure, not as a calculated column. Uh, we have in this table, in the in the sales table, in my fact internet sales, which is my sales table, I have the sales amount column. As you can see here, I have sales amount column and I have total product cost. So I want, get, I want to get some of this minus that. Let's say I don't have that as a calculated column and I want to calculate it through the measure uh, runtime. So let's say I create a new measure and I call this measure as um, sum of margin. Now I say this is equal to sum of um, sales amount minus total product cost. Now when I start writing total product cost, you see that it doesn't come up. Um, we are in the same table, we are in the fact internet sales table and total product cost is a column definitely there, similar to sales amount, so why this is not coming up? This IntelliSense is quite smart. Whenever it doesn't show you something, it means that something is not right. Um, the reason for that is that, as you can see here in the definition, sum adds numbers of a column. Sum expect a column name as an input. It doesn't expect an entire expression Sales minus cost is not a column name, it's an expression. And that's why it doesn't let you to do that, right? It only accepts a column. So if you want to do that with sum, this is the way that you would do it. Sum of this minus sum of fact internet sales. Sum of uh, total product cost, right? And it would work 
perfectly fine. There is no problem with that. But now imagine this is a much longer expression. This is like sales minus cost divided by unit price multiplied quantity. If the whole value is greater than uh, quantity multiply unit price divided by the total cost, then do this, do that. And if you put the sum at the beginning of every one of those, that would make it a much longer expression. Another scenario is that you have these two as separate measures and then you say this measure under uh, minus that measure. But if you don't really need those measures separately, this means that you have to create a lot of extra measures. Uh, so there are lots of other ways of doing that. Now, sum x is one of the ways that can do that. Sum accepts a column name as an input. However, sum x, as you see in the definition here, sum x, that x stands for an expression. Some x works for an expression. That means you can write an expression inside this uh, function. And when you write expression, because expression might come from a different table, that's why you also have to specify the table name as well. In sum, you don't specify table, you just say this is the column, and that column usually comes from one table only, of course. Um, this is an expression and you specify the table. So for example, if I want to write that expression, this is how I would write it. So my table name, by the way, shift enter goes to the next line. Uh, so my table name is fact internet sales. And my expression is sales amount minus total product cost. And it would work this time perfectly fine, right? So it accepts an expression inside my sum x because sum x is designed for this kind of calculation sum of an expression that is what sum x is right so with sum x you have much uh, more freedom in your expression whatever you can write um, and use that as the output now if i use this in my table over here i will get sum of margin, which is, which is the sales minus cost, right? I, we could have achieved that with a calculated column as well, but uh, that's not the purpose of this example. In this example, I'm talking about what is the difference between two functions, sum and sum x. Okay, now you might think that, okay, sum x seems to be only for expressions, and you can do that even without that. Um, is there any other reasons for that? Yes, sum x is useful for other scenarios as well. Uh, let me explain first how SumX works, then I'll explain what are other scenarios to use it. Uh, SumX, the way that it works, uh, is that it will go through every row in this table. Now, this table might have 10,000 rows, 1 million rows, 10 million rows. It will go through every row in that table. It will apply this expression on, the, on every row, sales minus cost, store it in a temporary storage, temporary memory somewhere. Then the second row, temporary memory, third row, temporary memory. At the end of the day, because it is sum x, it um, actually summarize all of them together, release that memory and show you the result. Because of this behavior, we call this function iterator function because it iterates through every single row in this table, applies an expression, then aggregate on top of that, right? Sum x is not the only iterator expression that we have. We have average x, min x, max x, count x. There are lots of these functions available. Okay, so and uh, as I said before, this is not the only um, uh, this is not the only uh, usage of this function. If you remember from the definition of this function, expression is one part of the expression, table is another part. And table itself can be quite interesting part of this function, which makes this function quite powerful function. That table means even functions that returns a table. Uh, and there are many functions that returns a table. All, for example, is one of the functions that returns a table. Uh, I have explained another blog article about what is all, how you can use it. Now, uh, let's say, for example, I want to use that. I want to get the total margin because this is not the total margin in every uh, education category. This is the margin of that education category. I want the total because I want to calculate the percentage, right? So what I can do is I can actually create a new measure. I can even copy that and write it again, but I just do it again. So total margin, I would call it. And I use sum x 
This time I want to run SumX on the entire data set, on the entire table. So I would say SumX on all of fact internet sales. And because all of fact internet sales itself returns a table, so it can be an input of this function. This is how usually you write DAX. One function returns an output which can be used as an input for another function. A lot of nested scenarios like this. So all of fact internet sales uh, as the input table, and then I can say sales amount minus total product cost. So it is still the margin calculation, but this time I run margin calculation on the entire table, right? Which makes this a total margin calculation because all will, uh, will actually uh, skip the filter applied on the table. So here is now the outcome of total margin, which you see regardless of the row, it will give me the total margin, which is perfect way of uh, using it for calculating the percentage. Then I can say the sum of margin in every row divided by total margin to calculate percentage, right? And all of that is because this function, the SumX, give me the ability to pass a table. And this table can be any other tables as well. This table can be, let's say, a filter table, which says um, from fact internet sales, filter everything that, for example, uh, uh, or from um, uh, from uh, fact internet sales, filter everything that their uh, product color is red, right? Uh, there are lots of things about like how you combine different functions together, how you use related to join one, fun one table to another table and things like that. This, for example, means that give me the margin only for red products under each category. So there are lots of uh, ways that you can enhance the way that you use SumX. Uh, bottom line is that sum is a basic function. It will give you some of a column in the context that it has been used. It can be used within a calculate function, then it can have a filter applied beside it as well. However, SumX itself has the ability to um, summarize an expression first. And also it has ability to uh, run through a table, which that table can be a filter table. It can be a joint table of multiple tables together. It can be a drive table. It can be any kind of tables. The way that SumX works is iterating through every row uh, in the table, applying the expression, then summarizing the output. Hope it was helpful for you. We have um, some other DAX videos and articles. Go and check out our um, YouTube channel, subscribe to your YouTube channel and uh, watch our weekly videos of Power BI and AI. Thank you.